Hi folks, and welcome back to the Geodynamics video lectures on the topic of the basics of elasticity. Here in video lecture 5.4, we're going to talk about uniaxial strain, which is similar to the previous lecture about uniaxial stress, but here we have strain in only one direction. We're going to look at one example in the lecture, and that is uniaxial strain in the case of sedimentation. What we're going to basically be looking at is the stresses in rock that are the result of burial. So I'm going to let you pause the lecture here for just a second on this slide and think about these questions. We don't necessarily have answers to the questions yet, but just have them in mind. And the two questions are, how does elastic stress change in sedimentary rocks as a result of burial? And what are the stress and strain conditions that are appropriate? for burial of sediment. So just pause the video for a second, uh, think about the questions. I'm not going to give you direct answers to these right now, but just give them a moment of thought and then come back when you're ready. All right, so let's talk about uniaxial strain. As I've already mentioned, uniaxial strain occurs when only one component of the principal strains is not equal to zero. So that means the material is only going to deform in one direction. Previously, we had squeezed the material along one axis and seen that it expanded on the other two. Here, we're confining those other two axes so that there can't be any deformation and we're just going to apply uh, or experience strain rather in one direction. In this case, we'll be talking about epsilon one, the largest principal strain. So for this scenario, we can set epsilon 2 and epsilon 3 equal to 0 in the equations from um, linear elasticity that were given two lectures ago. And in that case, the relationships you find in terms of stress are that sigma 2 is equal to sigma 3, which is equal to nu over 1 minus nu times sigma 1. And so if you rearrange that um, relationship and plug in the values for sigma 2 and 3 and solve you'll end up with something where sigma 1 is equal to 1 minus nu times e times epsilon 1. Again, this is Young's modulus. Nu, in case you've forgotten, is Poisson's ratio. And that's divided by 1 plus nu times 1 minus 2 nu. And again, this all comes from two lectures ago, just plugging in the values for the case of uniaxial strain. The example we're going to consider here is rock that was initially at the surface, so that's what's highlighted in this sort of pinkish color here. That was the surface of the earth prior to deposition of some thickness of sediment, so that you have the final surface blue here um, indicating that that's the top of the, sur of the um, or surface of the earth rather, after sediment has been deposited. In this case, we're going to assume that sigma 1 is vertical, and sigma 1 is going to basically just be equal to the weight of the overburden. So, as we've seen already a few times, sigma 1 is simply going to be rho times g times h, where h is the thickness of the pile of sediment that has been deposited. From the equation on the, or the equations on the previous slide, uh, for this particular scenario, we would find that sigma 2 equals sigma 3 equals nu over 1 minus nu times rho gh, just plugging that in for sigma 1. If we look then at what happens in terms of the deviatoric stresses in this particular case, what we observe is, well, first off, I'll just remind you that this is the principal stresses minus the pressure P, where P is the mean stress, or one-third times sigma 1 plus sigma 2 plus sigma 3, the average of the three principal stresses. And if you plug in what we had for sigma 1, sigma 2, and sigma 3 from the previous slide, you'll end up with something that looks like 1 minus nu over 3 times 1 minus nu times rho gh. So this 3 coming from the 1 third. And that means that if we calculate our deviatoric stresses sigma 1 prime, sigma 2 prime, and sigma 3 prime, we find that sigma 1 prime is simply sigma 1 minus p, and we can do the math there. We have sigma 1 on the previous slide, and we have this here, and you end up with this relationship here, 2 times 1 minus 2 nu divided by 3 times 1 minus nu times rho g h. Sigma 2 prime and sigma 3 prime are equal, but the important thing to note here is this. 
we have a negative sign out in front in this case, and it's 1 minus 2 nu divided by 3 times 1 minus nu times rho gh, but there is a negative sign there. So that means that the deviatoric stresses are actually tensile deviatoric stresses. So we've piled up this sediment on top and we've, we have a positive load of stuff sitting on top, but the deviatoric stresses in this case um, in the two horizontal directions are actually uh, tensile stresses. And so that's, um, you know, basically as far as we're going to go in this example of deposition of sediment in this particular case, uh, the Turcotte and Schubert textbook goes on to talk about another scenario, and that is the case of erosion, in which case you get just the opposite effect. If you had rocks that were down at depth and you assume that the stresses are lithostatic, meaning that the sigma 1, sigma 2, and sigma 3 are equal to the weight of the overburden, then when you exhume the sediment, or when you exhume rock from depth to the surface, you actually generate uh, deviatoric stresses, the horizontal deviatoric stresses, that are compressive and can be uh, fairly significant uh, in terms of their magnitude. All right, so that's it for uniaxial strain. It's time to, as usual, take your quiz and see how, um, how much you've understood of this lecture. And when we come back in the next lecture, we're going to be talking about pure and simple shear in elastic materials.